Fifth grade, we're going through the yearling chapters 25 through 28 today. And it starts off by, and you notice this in a lot of chapters, reminding you what time of year it is. So remember at the beginning of the book, it's April. Now we're in December, getting close to, closer to Christmas, okay? So it's going through and kind of describing what nature's like, especially since they've had the flood, okay? Um, but it goes through it and it, it talks about, you know, fresh meat is pretty scarce. It's hard to find, but that also helps um, the foresters as far as trading and money and things like that. Okay, so it starts off in the chapter, Buck Comes By, and um, they're kind of talking about the foresters because of what Lim did to Penny. But Buck comes by and he says, Slewfoot has been out and about um killing different things to be a lookout on or be on the lookout for him but he also says basically most of the wolves are gone okay um so as far as the foresters and penny even penny can tell when he's talking to buck and buck is one of the nicest of the foresters that there's still just a bit of a cold shoulder from them which of course penny doesn't like to have so after the foresters leave, it talks about the Christmas doings in Volusia, um, just basically a big Christmas party that's thrown by the church. And it's going through there and talking about what they're going to do for Christmas. Okay. So they talk about that a little bit and go into Volusia and, and staying in town. And then it talks about the different things that they do for Christmas. So Jody makes his mother the necklace from some beans that he finds. And Ma Baxter talks about for Christmas, she wants to go trading before so she can get some material to make her old wedding dress bigger so she can wear that and look nice. So they decide to go and hunt. That way they can have, basically because the animals are so scarce if you kill a deer the deer meat the price has gone up so much so they're deciding to go hunt and they go hunt and they get on this trail and julia will not hunt it and it says in there that jody for the first time in a long time sees penny you know punish the dog for not hunting and then you find out the reason that julia won't hunt the trail is because it's a flag okay and on their hunt the second day they kill some deer um and they're going to use that meat to go and trade it and get the material things for christmas that they want at the store remember mr Boyles, that's where they're going to go okay so they fix the deer and they're kind of planning going into town since Ma's going, they're deciding now whether they're going to stay overnight and go visit Grandma Hutter or not. So they decide eventually that they're going to stay overnight, which means, and you kind of see this with Jody, like he's thinking about not going because he can't bring flag. And of course, and he's like, just put the, just tie it up. It, it'll be fine. Okay. So eventually they um, put on their nicer clothing and they, head to Mr. Boyle's store and remember this is the first time they've been back since the huge fight and everything like that so as they're traveling there Jody's kind of thinking about Oliver and what that means how is he going to treat him if he sees Oliver and different things like that okay so it says he made up his mind definitely to at least politely ask about Oliver and how he's doing so, um, as far as <laughs> Grandma Hutto and the Baxters going over there, Ma Baxter, it says, brings, you know, some butter and some eggs to trade and things like that, um, some sweet potatoes. But remember, the two of them do not get along, okay? So, eventually, they make it across the river, and they get to the store, okay? And, of course, Mr. Boyles just wants to hear lots of stories about everything, where can he hunt to find a turkey, all kinds of stuff. But he just wants to sit and talk to Penny because he always does. Penny has the best stories. So they get in there and Ma's 
you know, getting her dry goods and things like that. And she figures out um, they don't have any brown alpaca, which is the material. And she sees the black, but of course she doesn't have enough money for that. So she eventually asks Jody to go outside with a really terrible story and gets a little something for him for Christmas. And then um, once she's done her training, she's ready to go. She doesn't want to stay. So you find out she goes by herself to Grandma Hutto's and the two um, Jody and Penny stay there and talk to Mr. Boyles for a while. Okay. Um, so after she leaves, then Penny gets the alpaca for Ma from the deer meat and then buys her some buttons and things like that. And that's her Christmas present. And then they talk for a while about where they can hunt and, and things like that. You also find out that Ezio, Ezio Zell, his house blew down in that storm. So he's living in Grandma Hutto's shack behind her house. And... Um, Eventually, as they've been talking, Penny realizes they've been gone a while, okay? And that means Grandma Hutto and Ma Baxter have been stuck together alone. They don't get along, so they decide it's time for them to go. So, as uh, Penny's finishing up, um, you have Jody who gets to the door at Grandma's, and he, like, he can feel that it's different there because Ma's there. He describes it as cold. And of course, you have the bickering back and forth between the two ladies. It's biting, um, making fun of, you know, Grandma Hutto wearing a, a frilly apron and things like they just bite at one another. And of course, um, Ma's got to throw in a couple of things about Oliver running away with Twink Weatherby. So eventually, Penny gets there. They stay for dinner. And of course, Penny kind of makes it lighthearted and it makes it to where they all get along much better. So they ask about Oliver. They find out he's in Boston where he's there a lot. You find out um, they eat their meal and they talk about Christmas and staying with Grandma Hutto after going to the party there, which is the Dunes. That's all that is. Okay. So um, they've got their plan for Christmas because remember it says the Christmas before they didn't do anything because they couldn't afford anything. They couldn't afford to bring anything in for Ma Baxter, she says, I'm not going to go to a party if I can't bring something for everyone else. So this year they can afford to bake like a, a fruitcake, basically. So they're kind of excited that they actually are doing something for Christmas this year. And then, of course, uh, Jody wants to bring flag and Grandma Hutto says that's fine. Um, and then at the end of this chapter, they talk a little bit more about Oliver and you find out that Oliver didn't just leave just because it says that Grandma Hutto was the one that told him he needed to get out of here because for her she's kind of lost patience with all of this it's kind of like if he loves Twink they need to get married quit with all of this around um, kind of like the shady business if you if you like her then court her marry her there's no need to run off different places like they're doing okay so Chapter 26, their cow has a baby, and it's a heifer, and they're very excited about that, because remember, the other one got killed by the wolves, and then, of course, Ma gets her material, and she's so excited, she gets to redo her dress, and she gets that done quickly. I mean, you even see Penny, like, pin it for her so she can get the dress put together, and then you have Buck come by again, old slew foots back at it. You know what this means when you're reading its foreshadowing that Slewfoot's going to reappear in a big way. So you find out the Foresters are not planning to go to Volusia. And it says that Penny's kind of glad um, that they're not going and that they decided to stay home. So because of the news, Penny sets up his bear trap that he has. And um, as far as Christmas, remember, Jody's made his mom a necklace but he's trying to figure out something to make his father. So he makes him, it reminds me of Tom Sawyer when they, they smoke the pipes and it's made out of corn. So that's what he makes his father. And it says that um, as it's getting closer to Christmas, Slewfoot makes it his appearance finally at Baxter's Island and kills the baby calf, which is huge for them, okay? Um, so at this point, it's like all out, 
Penny's going to kill Slewfoot. And you can tell from the beginning, and it's in here a lot, this is not like their hunts before. This isn't fun. This isn't exciting. There's no rest. It's not laid back. It is full throttle after the bear. Okay. So Jody goes with Penny. It's fast paced. And it says they don't talk much at all, which is odd. They don't rest much. And as they're tracking it, um, it start the trail kind of leads uh, to the lake and almost almost as if the bear is going to go back and finish what's left of the carcass. So Penny decides, well, we'll just go back home and circle back, set up the bear trap, um, and uh, kind of wait out for him. So he sets the trap for Slewfoot back home and with the carcass and all of that, and they sleep and they get out early the next morning. Come to find out, Slewfoot didn't come back. And of course, Penny's extremely mad, and now he's further behind. They at least kind of know where he is towards that lake, so they head back out that way. Um, and they know at this point, since they have to catch up with the trail, they're going to be gone a while. So Penny asks Ma to pack dinner, pack a bunch of food. And then, of course, it leads to what's going to happen with Christmas. I mean, and for Penny, he's not worried about it. But as he's sitting there and he's listening to, especially Ma Baxter with everything, he tells her to go ahead and ride to on Christmas Eve. And we're going to do our best to meet you there if we can. Okay. And, of course, it says her eyes were more moist, but she went without comment. So she knows there's nothing she could do about it, although she's upset about it. So Jody uh, is sitting there kind of waiting for the hunt to start. And of course, he's upset too because they're all looking forward to Christmas. So they get back on the trail. And remember, Flag is following them. And there's a point as they're going on this trail because it's a tricky one, Sloop. But I mean, there's a reason he hasn't been caught. Um, and eventually Flag, especially when they get close to Slewfoot, disappears. And so they find him near the spring, and they're trying to catch him. They go through the swamps. If you've ever tried to travel through swamp and muck and mud, it's really hard to walk. So um, he gets a little bit ahead, and then Julia, of course, catches him. And then... They get to the spring, and the bear makes it across, and of course, the dogs can't. And Penny shoots from across the other bank and hits him, but at this point, Slewfoot's across the water, and they have no way to get across there, and they have to find a way to do so. So, <clears throat> at this point, Jody thinks, well, I mean, there's no way we can catch him. He's on the other side of the water, so he thinks the hunt's going to be up. And little does he know, Penny's like, nope, let's go. We're, we're going to head this way. I know of a, of a way where we can get across, okay? So for them, so remember it's cold. He talks about, when I say he, I mean Penny, this cabin that he knows they can stay in. And they go to that cabin and you find out, um, you know, Flag hasn't been there in a while. I haven't seen him. And of course, Jody's worried about it. But um says don't worry about it he's probably already home and you also find out this cabin um, belongs to a widow that Penny used to court before he married Ma Baxter so the next morning you hear the dogs bark and then you get to meet her and her name is Nellie Jenright and for Jody he likes her and he um when he listens to her she, she Nellie kind of reminds Jody of Grandma Hutto. She has that kind of demeanor. Um, and you can tell the two of them, when I say the two of them, I mean Nellie, Jen Wright, and Penny kind of still have chemistry. And um, she kind of regrets letting Penny go. Because um, remember, Penny wanted to live in the middle of nowhere, and not everybody's cut out for that. Okay. So as they eat breakfast, you find out Nellie, Jen Wright has an old boat. It barely makes it across, but it makes it across, and it saves them a lot of time on their hunt, okay? So, 
Um, you find out Nellie Genwright's going to the Christmas party as well. So you know she's going to be there. Um, but <clears throat> eventually the Baxters leave. They use that uh, canoe. <laughs> it's like barely, it barely makes it across, but they, they get across. And it says the bear didn't really go far. It's like once it crossed the water, Sloopa thought he had it made. He bedded up. He's worn out from being tracked. And um, the dogs are right on him. Rip gets injured pretty badly. I mean, not as bad as old Julia the last time. But Penny shoots him, and they finally kill Slewfoot. But now here they are, away from home. And, of course, they're all so excited, but they have no way of getting the bear home. So they clean out the bear, and they basically decide they have to walk to four gates because there's no, they tried to move it. There's no way they can move this big old bear. So as they're walking, of course, um, you have Penny telling, he's back to his old self, basically. Happy, telling tales, talking, and he tells stories of some bear hunts. And lo and behold, they hear horses, and of course, it's the foresters, okay? So, they tell him about killing Slewfoot, and basically, if they'll help with the deer, they can have half the meat, and they decide to help him, and that they'll end up, this changes things, going to the Christmas doings at Volusia with them, okay? So, they get to the bear, they skin it, they cut it up, and um, make their way back to Baxter's Island to drop that stuff off. And then they head into town for the Christmas party, okay? So when they get to Baxter's Island to drop everything off, Ma's already gone. But, of course, Flag comes out. And uh, you find out he's he was home for a while, staying with Ma. So they head back to the church, to Volusia, to the Christmas party. And then, of course, the foresters have to have a little fun with the bear skin. And they pretend, well, basically Buck wears it and he looks like a bear. <laughs> Freaks everyone out so much so that they were about to shoot it. And then um, <laughs> he comes out of the bear skin. And then, of course, everybody, I mean, Old Sloop, everybody knows who Old Sloop it is. So they all want to hear the tales. Everybody's talking to Penny and Jody and all of them about it. And um, basically, it's kind of like famous. And uh, Jody enjoys it. So they're all at the story and, I mean, sorry, at the party. I'm reading my writing and it says story. <laughs> um, and it talks about, as they're sitting there, you have Jody look at his mother and, and he realizes that she does look quite beautiful in her new dress and all of that. So <clears throat> with the foresters there, um, you can tell, and, and it says it's the one time the two women agree, Ma Baxter and Grandma Hutto do not like the fact that they're there um, at all. And so the foresters are over by the door, and it says this um, man comes in that's a traveler, and you find out he told them that Oliver and Twink have come in on the boat. And, of course, the foresters disappear. So when Jody and Penny and them find out what's happened, they immediately run because... The foresters have been drinking, and Lim is extremely angry. So they're going to make sure nothing happens. And then they get towards Grandma Hutto's house, and it's on fire, okay? So just like Jody, I mean, we all know who did it, okay? And so, of course, Grandma Hutto's worried that Oliver's in there. So they send Jody back to the store where the, the boat dock is to find out if anybody has seen Oliver and Twink because... Um, if he's in that house, then he's dead, okay? So, um, Oliver and Twink, Jody sees them walking. He picks them up, and he says, uh, he tells them that Grandma's house is on fire and that foresters were the ones who had done it. So, when he gets there, of course, um, Oliver immediately goes to see Grandma Hutto, and she changes the story, and Jody's kind of, and even Ma Baxter's like, what are you talking about? But she changes it and says she left a lantern lit and the wind must have blown her curtains and that's what did it, okay? And um, so, of course, there's Jody and Ma Baxter like, no, 
happen, but they don't say anything. And then you also find out that while they were in Boston, Oliver and Twink got married, okay? And they kind of walk around the house. And when I say they, I mean Oliver and Twink. And that leaves Grandma with the Baxters. And she turns around and it, it turns around to him and tells him, we're not saying a thing. No, None of y'all are ever going to tell him. Because for her, the last thing she needs is her boy dead. And she even says she's going to move to Boston so all of this can be over with. She can't deal with it anymore. She doesn't want to lose Oliver. So in Chapter 27... The Baxters are saying goodbye to um, Grandma Oliver and Twink. And, of course, um, although Jody is kind of aloof with Oliver at first, you can see here, and even with Twink, the, the one that he hates more than anyone, um, he kind of changes his mind. They give him, you know, the gunpowder canister as a gift for fighting for um, Oliver. And Oliver, you know, talks about thanks for standing by me and always having my back and Jody gets that kiss from Twink and it's kind of like he's in a daze and it's almost as if he kind of understands Oliver a little bit more in that moment so they leave and of course Penny's totally torn up about it because he absolutely loves Grandma Hutto and them and although nobody can prove the Foresters did it everybody knows it okay but for Grandma Hutto, she doesn't want her son either dead or hanging or being hanged because he killed the Foresters. So <clears throat> they make it home to Baxter's Island. And then there's Flag. And it's kind of like in Chapter 28, everything is kind of quiet. Okay. Um, it, it says the, the general belief was that the Foresters set the fire because of Oliver and that the girl were back, but nobody really says anything about it, okay? So, the Foresters, since then, have not come by the Baxter's Island at all, which also kind of solidifies their guilt a little bit, okay? Um, so, in Chapter 28, because it's January, they're talking about crops. So, it says Penny had decided to do some cotton to get some money, and that... As far as the corn, it says they didn't have, like, it literally says their their animals are getting thin because they don't have enough to feed them properly. And then it reiterates, I mean, it said this multiple times, hunting's hard. It says the hunting was poor. The bears aren't near there. There's not many deer. It, it, it's, the food is kind of hard to come by at this point. And, um... It says the deer were scarce. Like the only thing that's plentiful is is chopping wood and wood for the fire since there's so much damage from the storm. So at the end of this chapter, and it's a it's a short, a relatively short one. Um, it says that they're cozying up inside and, and they hear outside one night um, some scuffling, some playing, and it's like they don't hear Julia play with Rip like that. So. Um, Jody goes outside, and you he sees Riff, the younger dog, playing with a wolf, okay? And it even says in there, Jody can tell that they've played together before. Like, this isn't something brand new. Like, these two play together quite often. So Jody watches, and then, of course, Penny follows, and they're not going to shoot it. And basically, it's one of the few wolves left, and it's just looking for somebody, a companion. And it brings back that idea that um, it was a harsh thing even for a wolf to be so alone that it must turn to the yard of its enemy for companionship. As for himself, Flag had eased a loneliness that harassed him in the very heart of his family. And it, it's reiterating that idea. And it's kind of like our town. We're, we're all built for companionship, everything. We all long for friendship, um, even if you have to turn to your enemy in this point. And it's kind of like Jody can totally relate to how that wolf feels. He just longs for something, someone to call his own, to call a friend. And that's how 28 ends.